why hello. Typically I don't cover midweek fixtures, but hey, it's late. Well, it's only like 10.30. I watched a lot of football over the past two days, so let's talk about stuff. On this edition of the weekend recap, or I guess it's the midweek recap, where we'll mostly talk Premier League, but also some Copa del Rey and Copa Italia. And I'm Adrian. Thanks for clicking, and let's get ticking. Tottenham haven't been in their greatest run of form lately and were thrown the task of taking on a Watford side that's part of that group of six-ish teams that are constantly trading places with each other from about 7th to 12th, aka they aren't exactly a simple team to beat. Well, Spurs were boosted by Son making his return since Korea's Asian Cup elimination and what a difference he made. With him up there, Spurs actually had some potency, some teeth to their attack, but they found themselves down 1-0 at halftime thanks to Loris, at least in my opinion, making an error. He came for the cross, realized he didn't have a chance, backed off, and it was easily headed past him. Son replied in the second, then Llorente climbed up a ladder to head home the winner in the 87th. Two goals in the last 10 minutes of the match. Exciting stuff. Llorente's goal was massive, not just for Tottenham, as they were really in need of a positive result after losing three of their last four matches and getting bounced from both domestic cup competitions in a matter of days. Forget about the points for a second, though, because while they're important, I think that Spurs were dangerously close to falling into a pit of self-loathing <laughs> and a complete lack of confidence. But Llorente needed it for himself as well. After his crazy miss from point blank when he had two little bites of the apple, he was on the verge of being known as Fernando Howl... Howler... Uh, Howlente? Uh, this, this isn't funny. What I'm getting at is he's been missing sitter after sitter. Clearly his confidence has been on the floor. And if he can find his form, then maybe, just maybe, Spurs can navigate these next few weeks without Delhi and Kane in a relatively okay manner. Man, you know what hurts? You know what hurts old Adrian here? Seeing a guy like Raul Jimenez, a chronic underachiever at Benfica, killing it in the Premier League. That's not how it's supposed to work. He was supposed to go to Wolves and have a promising season with them, not enough to make the move permanent, and then come back to us for another season where we inevitably sell him to Valencia or something shortly after once he performs well for us. He's not supposed to be putting in man of the match performances against West Ham and scoring a brace in a 3-0 win this week, which makes for eight goals and five assists in the league now for him. That's enough, Raul Jimenez. It's time to come home now. Mom said dinner's ready. It was my turn on the PlayStation. Know what else probably hurts? Well, if you're a United fan, thinking to yourself, sick, kickoff's an hour away. The starting 11 should be out now. So you hop on Twitter, look up the lineup and see that Phil Jones is in there. And of course he cost them a goal with his hospital pass to Andreas Pereira. Well, he had two guys closing him down. And if you're of the same mind as Chris, who was discussing the match with me on Twitter, yo, follow me on Twitter so you can discuss stuff with me too, by the way. But Chris was saying that he was unhappy with Young in there as well, and he would prefer to see Diogo Dalot. Of course, I agree, get that good Portuguese boy some more minutes. He's looked good for them when he's featured. And Ashley Young, the dude's, what, 34? 304? Anyway, Tom Heaton did his contractually obliged best to stifle his former club, hearkening back to the match during the 2016-17 season, I think, where he made about 739 saves. In this match, he only made 7 saves from United's 28 attempts on goal. In the 81st, Chris Wood made it 2-0, but then the United pushback began. In fact, this was the first time that United had trailed in a match under Solskjaer, so it was always going to be interesting to see how they responded. And it's safe to say they responded well, with Pogba converting a pen and Lindelof getting the goal he deserved lately to make it 2-2, and that was the final score. And another note I had was that, as per usual, I think that Rashford looks crap when he's on the wings. I mean, his performance in general was just crap against Burnley, missing that opportunity when Lukaku put him through. Oof. But he looks even more crap on the wings. Play him centrally, keep Lukaku as a super sub, keep Lingard in there. Imagine being a defender, tired in the 75th minute, and a fully energized Romelu Lukaku comes onto the pitch, constantly running at you with his pace and strength. That's an absolute nightmare. Use him off of the bench. Speaking of which, that's what City had against Newcastle United, a nightmare. <sighs> Secret agent Rafa Benitez doing his former club Liverpool a favor, I guess. On the day that Newcastle fans had heard the news that Miguel Almiron would be signing for them, if you're not familiar with him, by the way, he's sick. The Newcastle faithful were rewarded for their patience with the club, even more so when the Magpies came out as two, one, winners over who else but Manchester City. 
That's right. 2-1 winners despite City taking only 24 seconds to score against them via Sergio Aguero, their fastest goal in the Prem since November of 2013, actually. City did have a strange situation with a goal being disallowed because De Bruyne took a free kick quickly, despite the referee telling him to wait for his whistle. Despite that, City weren't even close to their best and even Guardiola admitted as much in his post-match interview, which, by the way, he was about 40 minutes late for as he was in the City dressing room, likely giving them a dressing down. Weird visual. Okay guys, come on. It's time to dress down. Come on guys, focus here. So that result meant that Liverpool had a chance to extend their lead to 7 points, but Unfortunately for them, they would have to do it against a Leicester City side that was previously culpable for handing the aforementioned City an L. Well, they didn't manage to defeat Liverpool on a slushy, slushy, slurpy of an Anfield pitch, but they did smother the optimism of those fans that were hoping for a 7-point lead on City. Another early goal, this time from Sadio Mane, which was Liverpool's fastest since April of 2016, but Leicester were able to get an equalizer from Harry Maguire before the hap, hap, half was up. And that was how this one ended. I didn't think that Liverpool were good enough for a win, in fact they were held to just 10 chances in this one, and according to OptiJo, the only time they've had less shots this season was the two occasions in which they faced City. I will say, however, that I think Liverpool were robbed of a penalty when Ricardo Pereira clumsily put a leg in on Naby Keita and didn't get a sniff of the ball. People say there wasn't enough contact for a penalty, but we've seen penalties given for way less contact before, so I don't really subscribe to that notion. If a hand on Lingard's shoulder is enough for a penalty, then in my opinion, a stomp on the foot slash ankle of a guy is a penalty as well. He wasn't even close to the ball. Arsenal got a 2-1 win over Cardiff, Everton got a win for once, but the biggest thing of all, well, if you'll allow me, where are we? Wow, a lot of C words in here. Not that C word. Collapse. To fall in as the size of a hollow vessel, to shrink together, to break down, to suffer from physical or nervous prostration, to come to nothing. Complete failure. Alternatively, Chelsea versus Bournemouth. Now, I'm not saying I never expect Chelsea to lose. I mean, you're talking to the guy, or at least watching a guy talk, who predicted that they would finish sixth in the league. But I did not see them losing 4-0 to Bournemouth. Hell, I expected it even less when I tuned in towards the end of the first half. I was flipping around from game to game, and I saw it was nil-nil. And then, big collapse happened, with David Brooks and Josh King going mad out there. Sorry, ball doesn't work, man. The Bournemouth players said it themselves. Shut down Jorginho, and you shut down Chelsea. Higuain was anonymous, as expected, because he's been on a slow decline since he left Napoli. David Luiz has had a howler. Kante being misused as per usual. Hazard relatively anonymous. Just completely garbage. And I'm not sure Sarri will be there next season with how this owner works. Unproven manager that hasn't won a single thing and doesn't have the players or the experience to punch much higher than this in the league now. Which, by the way, here's a look at how things stand at the top of the table. And I'm sorry, Chelsea fans, if I sound harsh, but I think that a lot of you will agree. You look spineless out there. Liverpool extended their lead to five points. Tottenham, despite their troubles, are now just two points behind City, while Arsenal, Chelsea, and United are playing in their own mini-league for fourth place at the moment. Okay guys, like I said, mainly Prem here since there are so many juicy details, but let's quickly go over the Coppa Italia and Coppa del Rey matches. We'll start with the latter as Espanyol and Real Betis faced off in the quarters and were the definition of even. The first leg ended 1-1 and the second leg was the same, so you know what that means. Extra time. Possibility of a shootout? No! Batiste wasn't having that as they scored two goals in four minutes in the first half of extra time. Batiste move on to the semis. Valencia. Despite having a strange season where they have this strange, sorry to use that word again, gravitational pull towards drawing every single one of their matches, they put in work against Hatafe on Tuesday. So, in the first leg, Valencia lost 1-0 away, and in the second leg, they got the anxiety up in the crowd by conceding in the first damn minute at home. An away goal for Hatafe, remember, as they went 2-0 up on aggregate. However, Rodrigo Moreno said, Nah fam, knocked out, I ain't about that life, and he handed Valencia a lifeline in the 64th minute, 1-1. 2-1 Hatafe on aggregate. They still needed two goals to advance at that point and two goals they secured in this insane game. Rodrigo scored two more. 
<laughs> in the 92nd and 93rd minutes to take Valencia through to the semi-finals. Absolute scenes at the Mestalla. In the other match on Wednesday, Barcelona were 2-0 down on aggregate at home to Sevilla, but Leo Messi loves a Sevilla match, and he and the Barca boys absolutely slammed Sevilla. They gave them hope in the first leg, only to cruelly and probably intentionally chop the legs out from under Sevilla. 6-1 was the final in this match, as Barcelona scored one of the best team goals I've seen so far this season. Hot take by me on Twitter, I admit it, but that goal was poetry, man. I just got so excited. It got me off my seat. So the final semi-finalist, that sounds confusing, will be determined tomorrow when Real Madrid faces Girona. Coppa Italia and the matchups in the quarterfinals were incredible. Coppa Italia. All the matchups in the quarterfinals were incredible. Just what you want to see in a domestic cup competition. We started with Piantec and Milan hosting Napoli, and wouldn't you know it, the little pistolero only went ahead and scored a brace to give Milan the 2-0 win, scoring with his first shot on target, no less. I'm pretty happy for the Milan fans, actually, given that they have a real striker now. I feel like they haven't had one in ages, as Piantec showed he wasn't just a fluke at Genoa and is genuinely a good finisher. Sure, he's only been scoring in Italy since August of 2018, and one-season wonders do exist, I recognize that, but I've watched a lot of this kid, and I think he's going to be huge. By the way, I watched a ton about him because I did a player bio on him, and if you want to get to know this kid from his humble beginnings in Poland to his arrival in Italy, then I'll link to that in the comments below. Not on comments below, I'm going to link to it on my video in the comments. Fiorentina absolutely demolished AS Roma as Roma continue to have a bipolar season. One minute they're looking good, the next they're losing. Oh, you know, just 7-1 to Fiorentina. And let the hype train for Federico Chiesa leave the station now, man, as he scored a hat-trick against Roma. Embarrassing for the Capital City Club to go out in that kind of fashion. And finally, Juventus were beaten quite handily 3-0 by a red-hot Atalanta that boasts perhaps the most informed striker in the entire world, or at least in Europe. Duvan Zapata. The 27-year-old Colombian has been smashing goals in against every single team he's faced in the last 10 matches, where he scored, oh, you know, just 17 goals. But anyway, when I saw that Juve lost, and I'm sorry Juve fans, but I'm sure you'll agree with me, I was kind of glad to see it happen because Juve have been deserving a loss lately. Their performances haven't matched their results really, and they needed a major wake-up call or to crash down to earth thanks to a spanked bottom. They should have lost against Lazio if it wasn't for Chesney's heroics and Lazio's terrible finishing. Hell, they could have lost quite a few of their matches this season. And with Benucci out, Chiellini potentially out for a while, and the horrible, horrible timing of selling Benazia just a couple of days ago, there could be more problems on the way for Juve if they can't sort out their defense. Know what else is hilarious? They've been linked with... Bruno Alves! <laughs> Say it ain't so. The dude's like 81 years old. All right, speaking way too much here, guys. What else is new there? But hey, if you don't mind speaking too much, then you're going to love smashing the like button on this video. That doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter. Do it anyways, but only if you enjoyed the video, okay? If you didn't like it, hit a dislike for me. I'm Adrian. Thank you all for sticking around, and if you made it this far on the video, shout out to you. I'll see you very soon. Love you. Bye.